Okay, in this video I'd like to prove a formula for the distance travelled by a particle in a fluid. And the fluid I'm talking about in this case is air. So basically we're talking about working out the distance and then the, uh, the, the velocity of a particle when it is falling in the air. So the first thing we need to do is to work out what the air resistance is. So if I say air is the air resistance, we might initially think that it's proportional to the velocity of the body moving in the air. And that tur turns out to be a pretty good approximation for low velocities. So that means that the, the, the air resistance is equal to a constant which we call the, the coefficient of air resistance times the velocity. And this is just for low resistances. At high resistances, or high, excuse me, velocities, this does not work. And uh, why it doesn't work involves we need to use a quadratic, uh, a quadratic approximation, something I won't talk about in this video. So the next thing we need to do is apply Newton's laws to something falling. So if you apply Newton's laws, you'll see that we have two forces. We have um, F times V, in, and sorry, we don't, we have K times V in this direction, which is the air resistance, and in this direction we have Mg. And I'm going to define this direction as my positive J hat direction vector. So if you apply Newton's second law, Newton's second law states that the sum of the force vectors is equal to the mass times the acceleration vector. That's going to be equal to Mg minus Kv is equal to Ma. All right. Now, the, the acceleration is going to increase the velocity of the body, and the, the velocity of the body increasing is also going to incre increase the air resistance. So at some point, the air resistance is going to equal the uh, equal the weight vector, and as a result, the sum of the force vectors is going to be equal to zero, and you won't have any acceleration. So what we'll get is that mg is equal to k times v, and you'll get that v is equal to mg over k. And this means that at this particular velocity, there is no acceleration, so we call it our terminal velocity. So now what we need to do is just manipulate this formula we have in front of us. And we know that the acceleration vector in a derivative differential form is equal to dv dt. And we also know that the velocity terminal is equal to mg over k. So in order to get the terminal velocity into this equation, we need to divide everywhere by k. So what we'll be left with is m over k times dv dt is equal to the terminal of velocity minus v. Now we need to solve this for the velocity. That means we need to integrate this equation. And the way you integrate an equation like this is by using separation of variables. So this is a function of the velocity. Notice velocity terminal is just a constant. So if you rearrange it, you're going to get the following. All right. Now, the next is a small bit of a sleight of hand. All right. We want the, we'll say the function which you're trying to find out to have a positive value. So that means we're going to have dv over v minus v sub t is equal to negative k over m dv. And what we want to do then is integrate this. And how you integrate this, we know of course that at time t is equal to zero, the position vector of the, the um, body is equal to zero. If we're defining downwards equals negative j hat. Or was, excuse me, downwards is positive j hat. So that means that t is equal to zero, our velocity is equal to zero, and t is equal to v, the velocity is equal to v. So let's just integrate this. This turns out to be a natural logarithm. Evaluate it between 0 and v. And this is just negative k times t over m. So to evaluate this, is we're going to get the natural logarithm of v minus v sub t minus the natural logarithm of negative vt. It's going to be equal to negative k over m kt over m, like so. All right, and the difference of a logarithmic, logarithmic function is equal to its, is the same as its quotient. So this is the same thing here. These are just laws of logs, which uh, are not that difficult. Like that. All right, so just bear with me now while I just clean out my board.
So the next thing we need to know is that the exponential and the logarithmic function are inverse functions. So we'll say the exponential of a logarithm is just equal to the argument of the logarithm. So that means if I take the exponential of both sides, the log will go away. And we'll be, get, we'll be left with v minus v sub t over negative v sub t is equal to the exponential of minus k times t times m. If we rearrange that, we're going to get v minus v sub t is equal to minus v sub t times the exponential. Therefore, v is equal to v sub t outside of 1 minus the exponential. And that is the formula for the velocity of the body moving in an air resistance uh, moving with air resistance in a fluid. All right, so that's pretty straightforward stuff. Now, the next thing I'd like to show you is how to get the actual position of this this particle. So bear with me just one moment. Okay, we'll rewrite this equation here. So to rewrite the equation, we had that uh, v is equal to v sub t outside of one minus e to the minus uh, k times t over m, like that. And this is a velocity. So how do we get position? Well, we know that we'll say dx times dt is equal to v. Therefore, the integral of v dt is equal to dx, or x, we'll say. All right, so that means we just need to integrate this function with respect to t. Now, where is t in this function? t is in the exponential. So that means if we integrate here between 0 and v, um, no, don't mind the, don't mind the, um, don't mind the limits. Just integrate v times v dt, and integrate. Uh, we have outside v sub t, which is a constant. One minus e to the minus k times t over m. And if we integrate that dt, so what will we, we be left with? Well, this just becomes t is equal to v sub t outside of t. Minus now to difference or to integrate an exponential, you just have the same thing, but you divide by the differential of the argument. So we're just going to have e to the minus k t over m, and we need to divide by the differential of this, which means we're dividing by uh, minus k over m. And of course, this whole thing we need to add a constant, so the constant is just plus c because this is in, 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 def, uh, in indefinite uh, integration. So we're going to get t is equal to v sub t outside of t plus m over k times e to the minus kt over m plus c. Now, what do we know? That, sorry, that t, that's, that's incorrect. That should have been um, integrated v to t and we get position. Sorry, what am I doing? That's, that's a very silly mistake to make. All right, position. So the next thing we need to know is, well, where is the particle at time t is equal to zero? We need a boundary condition in order to get this constant here. So we know that t is equal to zero, the position is equal to zero, because it hasn't moved anywhere at this stage. So let's apply that piece of knowledge, and we're going to find that when the position is equal to zero, the velocity terminal times zero plus m over k times e to the naught plus c. All right? So we find that c is equal to c is equal to negative v sub t times m over k. v sub t times m over k. All right. So let's just plug that into the equation which we had a moment ago. So we had negative v sub t times m over k. So that means we can bring this in, and we can rearrange to look like the following. v sub t outside of um, t plus m over k outside of, um, outside of, well, uh, but this is a minus, it might look easier. So we're going to get 1 minus e to the minus kt over m, like that. All right, that's just a small bit of algebra. And you find that's your position. Your position, of course, y is equal to y of t. Like that. All right, so that's all I've got to say. I hope that was pretty straightforward. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.